right, Johnny? What's the best diet for fat loss? I put on a few pounds. I was, I was hoping to lose them. <sighs> Ian, I've told you this many times. You've just got to create a calorie deficit. Okay. I was just asking. Dave in tech, he said it was keto. It doesn't matter what the diet's called, okay? As long as you can create a calorie deficit and stick with it, Ian, that's it. That's all that matters. Okay, I was just asking. No need to get your panties in a twist. I'll create a calorie deficit then. How do you do that? What's up YouTube and welcome to today's video. If you hadn't already guessed in this video, I wanna share with you how you can create a calorie deficit and calculate accurately how many calories you should be eating to be in a calorie deficit without even using a calorie calculator. See, the problem with these calorie calculators is that they are relatively inaccurate because they can't account for all the specific things that are happening in your body. Yes, they do consider your height, your weight, but they can't consider how much sleep you're getting and what the effect that might be having on your metabolism. So instead, I have a method that you can use, that I use, that I use with my clients, that is the most accurate way to calculate how many calories are right for you. Another reason for today's video is because I have just embarked on my own six week mini diet cut transformation thing and I want to share the journey and the processes with you. So if you're wanting to do your own physique transformation or you want to do your own diet or, or whatever it is you want to do, you want to lose a bit of body fat, then you might be able to gather some information from these videos and apply them to your own training and nutrition. Let's look at how you can create a calorie deficit without using a calorie calculator. This method is about as accurate as they come and in order for it to be successful, you're going to have to track what you're eating. Before we begin, download MyFitnessPal or an app like MyPlate or Fujicate, something that will allow you to accurately track your calories. I did this last week before beginning my own diet, so I'll use that as an example to hopefully demonstrate to you how you can do this method. For me, I began at a weight of 104 kilo and over a seven day period recorded everything I ate and averaged a daily calorie consumption of 3,300 calories. After day seven, on day eight, I weighed myself with the same protocol that I used on day one, immediately after waking up, going to the bathroom in as little clothing as possible, just stepping straight on the scales, and I weighed 104 kilos, so I was exactly the same. Now, it's important to note that during that week, I walked the same amount of steps I normally walk. I trained the same amount that I normally train. I had a pretty average standard week. So there was nothing irregular that could have affected my body weight in any way. What this tells me is 3,300 calories is about the right number of calories that I should eat to maintain my body weight. The idea is to establish an accurate amount of calories that you need to be eating in order to maintain your body weight. And this tells me that 3,300 calories is the right number for me. So then going into a diet, I could just reduce this number of calories, eat that many, and in theory, I should lose weight. And if it plateaus, I can just continue to reduce the number. Now, during that seven day period, if my weight was to go up, say by one pound or 500 grams, this would indicate that 3,300 calories puts me into a calorie surplus, and I would be required to reduce that number immediately in order to start losing weight. Now, we know 3,500 calories calories is equal to a pound of body fat. So if I ate 500 calories less every day over seven days, I would in theory lose a pound of body fat by the end of the week. <sighs> Hopefully you're still with me. This is the method I use for my clients. It's simple and it's highly accurate. Now you've worked out what your baseline calories are, it's time to create a calorie deficit. We want you to be able to eat as much food as possible. This is key in order to sustain your diet. So I would suggest that you reduce it by maybe five to 10% max. Some people have discovered that just by eating their maintenance calories, but reducing carbohydrates and increasing protein can be enough to lose body fat. You'll always need to reduce and eventually you will plateau. So don't create too large a deficit immediately. Hopefully you're still with me. All this talk about calories has got me hungry. I'm gonna make some food and then I'll uh, chat to you in a bit. Bye-bye.
So now we have your maintenance calories and hopefully you've got an idea of how many calories you wanna eat in order to lose weight, to create that calorie deficit. The next thing we need to think about is how can we increase that deficit but without removing any food? Because remember, we want you to eat as much food as possible and still lose weight because food is great and that's the most sustainable way to diet. When I talk about increasing your calorie deficit, I don't just mean through going to the gym more frequently. There are loads of other ways you can increase that activity. Like swimming. <laughs> swimming is awesome and it doesn't need to be strenuous. You could just do gentle laps if you like. And it's an awesome way to increase your calorie deficit without removing any food. Because ultimately that's what we always want to do. We want to increase that deficit but we don't want to eat any less. And if you don't like swimming, you can always go walking. Walking is awesome. Just walking 10,000 steps every day is going to have a huge impact on your calorie expenditure. And it's not that stressful. By nature, exercise can be really stressful, especially high intensity exercise. And if you're already really stressed, perhaps from work or from your personal life, then you're only going to be adding to that stress by doing high intensity bouts of exercise. So if you're flooded with the stress hormone known as cortisol, that's really gonna make it harder for you to lose body fat. So instead, don't add to the stress, try and walk 10,000 steps. Don't go to the gym and thrash out a workout and sit down for the rest of the day. Instead, just try and walk 10,000 steps every day. Calorie expenditure will go through the roof and you'll increase your calorie deficit. I mean, it's awesome. And walking can have such a good impact on your mental health. I mean, look how beautiful this place is. I hope you found today's tips useful. You should now be able to calculate an accurate number of calories for you to lose body fat. Next week, I wanna share with you how to calculate your macros, so your carbs, your fats, your proteins for weight loss, and I also wanna share with you some of my tips and tricks for eating out whilst dieting. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you're feeling even nicer, subscribe to my channel, and please share this video with anyone you think might benefit. My main goal from this channel and from my Instagram account is just to try and help one or two people per day. And even on YouTube, that could be quite challenging. So by sharing this with anyone you think might benefit, you're really helping me fulfill that mission. I'll see you on the next video. <laughs> I lost the camera and the skateboard. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>